How's it going, guys? So this is a medium difficulty question for internal medicine slash surgery for 2CK. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste your time. All right, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. 54-year-old man, three-day history of double vision, dizziness, burning pain in his right big toe, three-month history, burning sensations over the legs, vitals are normal. Examination shows bluish hue of the right big toe. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin, 19.0 grams per deciliter. This is elevated, should be 13 to 17.5 in men and non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Leukocytes elevated, 12,000 per microliter, should be 4 to 11,000 per microliter. Platelets normal, 400,000 per microliter, should be 150 to 450,000 per microliter. Hemoglobin saturation, low at 94%. We want uh, as close to 100% as possible, 93% uh, or below. Patients should be in hospital. I will explain this as we move through the question. Ferritin is normal, okay? So uh, if you Google normal ferritin levels, you'll get a variety of ranges uh, depending on the website. But I can tell you for US Milli, ferritin is the most sensitive marker for iron levels. Under 15, 1, 5 is iron deficiency anemia. 300 or greater is hemochromatosis. If the US Milli wants hemochromatosis, they will give you 300 or greater. Okay, so questions asking what's most likely to rapidly correct the patient's visual disturbances. Let's just walk through the answers. Choice say aspirin, wrong fucking answer. This is used for acute MI, all right, so antiplatelet therapy. Uh, when medical personnel arrive, uh, patient will receive double antiplatelet therapy, clopidogrel, ADP 2I12 receptor blocker. Aspirin has utility in ischemic stroke after three to 4.5 hours. If under that time frame, we give thrombolysis, TPA. Aspirin can be, can be given to patients who have ischemic heart disease, that is uh, angina pectoris, where they receive nitrates acutely for the pain, of course, but a daily aspirin benefits those patients. Um, aspirin also used for carotid stenosis, okay? So patient will be on antiplatelet therapy in addition to a statin. So aspirin has a myriad of uses, and of course its mechanism, very high yield for the step one level stuff. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, deferoxamine, wrong answer. This is an iron chelator that's used for patients who have secondary hemochromatosis due to transfusional siderosis. Very sophisticated way of saying iron overload from chronic slash serial transfusions. Every time patient receives blood, uh, his or her iron levels will increase. Uh, so for example, beta thalassemia patients who need chronic transfusions, iron levels can increase. You can give deferoxamine as a chelator. Do not give iron chelators for hereditary hemochromatosis. You're going to do serial phlebotomy instead. Choice C, fresh frozen plasma, wrong answer. This is for rapid reversal of warfarin. If a patient needs surgery or has active bleeding, if we uh, want slower, if we're okay with slower reversal of warfarin, we can just give oral vitamin K. Uh, which will take a few days to bring the INR down. Choice D, hydroxyurea, wrong answer. This uh, is used to prevent recurrence of sickle cell crises. It decreases recurrences by about 50%. It increases fetal hemoglobin, HBF. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, ringer lactate is correct answer. So you need to know that ringer lactate, aka lactated ringers, uh, is the same thing as 0.9% normal saline for USMLE purposes, okay? In actuality, there might be a little bit of potassium or phosphate in ringer lactate in comparison to 0.9% normal saline, but USMLE, they just use these interchangeably as normal saline. So uh, this patient has polycythemia vera. This is a JAK2 mutation, all right? Now, the patient can be older. I've seen 70-year-olds uh, on the NBME exams with polycythemia vera. So as I said, JAK2 mutation, you're always going to have uh, an increase in hemoglobin. It's bone marrow overproduction, okay? So always increase in hemoglobin. And then leukocytes and or platelets can also be elevated. So all three can be elevated. Maybe you could have uh, just the leukocytes elevated in addition to the RBCs as we have here. You're going to get variation. Patients get hyperviscosity syndrome which presents in a myriad of ways, diplopia, dizziness, burning pain, Raynaud phenomenon, okay, burning sensations, uh, can cause confusion and uh, memory disturbance. I've seen that on NBME as well. So HbO2 saturation is often at the lower end of normal. This has been my observation across NBME exams, okay? Whenever you get a polycythemia vera, polycythemia vera question, they give you HbO2 
uh, saturation. It'll always be around 94, 93, that ballpark. It's acceptable, okay? The patient has more hemoglobin floating around, so it's harder to saturate it. But if you do PO2, the dissolved oxygen in the blood, it's normal because there's nothing wrong with the lungs, okay? So this is an expected finding in polycythemia vera. And don't confuse polycythemia vera with secondary polycythemia. Uh, you can get COPD, lung disease, where O2 saturation is very low. They might give you an O2 saturation in the 80s, okay, uh, which is significantly lower than what we'd have for polycythemia vera. As I just said, 93 to 95 for polycythemia vera. But if they give you COPD, cystic fibrosis, uh, some sort of lung condition where HPO2 saturation is in the 80s or below, and hemoglobin's high, and leukocytes and platelets are normal, it's secondary polycythemia. Also, renal cell carcinoma can secrete EPO, cause secondary polycythemia. We treat this with serial phlebotomy. U.S. Similarly can give you the same answer, their same question here, and then they say, um, uh, what's like the longer term treatment for this patient? Okay, or what's the treatment? They don't mention saline here for rapid correction of the hyperviscosity serum. You need to know uh, serial phlebotomy is a frequent answer. Okay, as I said, serial phlebotomy is also for hemochromatosis. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.